question chapter 6 topic scrutinize your person you said self sufficiency means first i am not emotionally dependent second my state of mind is not decided by the others first question these are the two statements first one is i am not emotionally dependent second is my state of mind is not decided by the others first question what is meant by emotion what is the meaning of emotional dependence second what is the meaning of state of mind not decided by others do they mean the same or do they have any differences this is the clarification if you remember in in vedanta treaties we speak about the cone lying on its base the cone lying on its side and the cone trying to stand on the apex the pointed end the cone trying to stand on the pointed end is the emotional dependence the cone lying on the side is others decide your state of state of mind the third one is stable this is the uh, this is the reference from the book now i'll explain what is emotional dependence means emotional dependence is a mental state a way of life where the person will be constantly in need of somebody that is emotional dependence again i repeat emotional dependence means a person will be constantly in need of somebody okay it's very simple if you observe your own self little bit of reflection if you do little bit of self analysis you do you will understand towards always your mind will be going to a few human beings again and again and again it will not go to everybody you can catch yourself any number of times doing that again i repeat emotional dependency means your mind by itself keeps circling around a few human beings those human beings are your emotional dependents sir it is going towards god sir it won't go like that even if it is going it will be going for that emotional dependence only per se for the sake of god and all it won't go are you able to follow what is emotional dependency a very simple self analysis will 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 teach you it will be just going around circling around that three four people you may have seen that person 20 years back you won't even know whether that person is still alive or not but the mind will still keep going 
are able to follow? This is called emotional dependency. Second point is your state of mind is decided by others means there are there is a different situation where you are stable, meaning you are not permanently stable and all more or less he seems to be okay. A remark, a comment or a remark, the presence of the, 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 the arrival, the sight of a human being disturbs you. Normally you are okay as long as you don't see that person. The moment you see that person, it starts. This is this is what is meant by saying the others decide your state of state of mind. All that means is what you yourself will go and search of some, even where even when you are tired of that search and you are sitting quietly, which you call as stability, the others come and disturb you. The others affect you. So this is known as this is known as uh, uh, your state of mind decided by others. Sometimes it will be a combination of both also. It will be as the as the as the as the employee takes the lift in the office, that person will be desperately thinking, I should not meet this person today. And the first person will appear before the eye is that human being. And that is enough to that is enough to disturb the and that's enough to disturb the whole day. This is what is meant by emotional. This is what is meant by the emotional dependence. So, to revisit the clarifications again, the first question is, the first one is emotional. What is emotional dependence? Your thoughts continuously looking for somebody, circling around a few again and again and again. Emotional dependence. What is the meaning of state of mind decided by others? State of mind decided by others means others affect you. What is growth? Growth is your state of mind is not decided by others. At least the first thing that you should, do, at least the first level of growth that you, that you should have is your state of mind should not be decided by others. State of mind not decided by others means what others say, what others don't say what others do, what others don't do. This is what is meant by state of mind, not decided by others. Again, not decided by others means what they say or what they don't say. What they do or what they don't do will not affect you. This is the first level of, this is the first level of understanding a person can develop. Are they the same? Are they different? There is a very subtle difference between the. There is a very subtle difference between the two. This is answering the first clarification. Yes, there is one more clarification. We'll take it up. Yes. Two questions. When you when you meet a beggar on the road who is blind or or dead, by the jage na you having that in mind, you have to. Give money, is it like an obligation to give money to the Jagi Yagna, Nepal Yagnas, where you where you Oh, from the 12 Yagnas, okay, okay. Uh. Where you take a wealth. Yes. So, uh, whether you get your salary, and mm. you have to donate and you're on, on the road, mm. you see somebody, a uh, beggar, you have to, is it an obligation to give? That's the question. Yes. Second question, if uh, if you have a good quality like intelligence, will it be? Will you also be arrogant? Is it? Is it? Does it work like that? Does every yeah. good quality have a bad, bad, bad side to it? One, one goes, and 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 if you're good at math, you automatically good at the bad languages. Like that. Yeah. Two questions. 
first question is yesterday evening i assume unnecessarily should have attended one group discussion and uh, and the question is from that uh, group discussion unnecessarily i am assuming otherwise yeah. out of context is coming and asking about 12 yajnas which uh, out of syllabus for me now so 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 the first question about 12 yajnas and all that is we are not taking it up now because it is totally out of it is totally out of context here to i can generalize the question not from the reference to 12 yajnas and all i can generalize the question the question the question that she is asking is a very specific scenario what is a specific scenario when you see a beggar on the road side after you have earned your salary should you give donation ah Yeah, and like should we give the person and also donate the charity for? Ah, okay. The question that she is asking is: first of all, she is not even working. Now she is she is asking question about the assumed salary that she is going to get one day. So on the salary that she is going to get one day, the question is: should I? Should I? Ah, uh, should I? Ah, uh, yes, yes. We is the questioner. Yeah, see, is the question is the question after getting the salary on my way home, I see a beggar. Should I should I donate to that person and also do charity? And when I go home, I'll become bankrupt because beggars are given, charity is given, and I'll be going. Home empty handed. Then how will I pay my bills? Okay. Dhanam or charity is a discipline, a spiritual sadhana followed not for the benefit of another. You do dhanam for your inner purification. How does dhanam? Help in your inner purification. All of us have X amount of resources, salary. Let us say, all of us have X amount of salary. In that, I can legitimately use it for my indulgences, or I can curtail my indulgences and do charity. So, what is purifying here? Are able to follow what I am saying? You have X amount of quantum. You can use it for your indulgences, or you can just transfer it indiscriminately because of attachment, or you can do it for, or you can do it for chitta shuddhi. Are able to follow? It means you are curbing your indis, you are curbing your indiscriminate transfer. Also, you are curbing your your weaknesses for indulgences, and whatever is cut, whatever is left, what do you do with that quantum? You give, you give dhanam. It's an obligation. You give dhanam, and that giving is a obligation. Doing dhanam is not. doing danam is not a you don't have a choice again i repeat regarding danam you don't have a choice regarding danam it has to be it has to be done since people don't have this habit of giving danam government forcefully makes you to give danam july 31st is the deadline for that danam are you able to follow If if all of us were to doing dhanam, government need not force us, but government has to force us and make us give dhanam. And the dhanam they will force you to give is dependent on your 
is dependent on what? Always it is it is proportionate. Are you able to follow? Therefore, dhanam is his obligation. Are you able to follow? To whom and what and how and all that we will discuss later. Some other context when it comes we will discuss it. But it, giving dhanam is is obligation. Quantum of it is avoiding the you 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 discipline yourself, you avoid your indulgences and then and then do it. Some time back, one of the persons here, he asked me, sir, this, uh, you know, this, he had a problem with drinking. What do I do? I don't know. No, trying this, trying nothing is working. I said, I, so, so, I called his wife and said, how much he is spending on drinking? X amount a week. I said, whenever he spends that money, take that money and put it in a hundi and every month, Every month, count it in front of him and call the driver and give it to him. Myself. Are you able to follow? Every week, he is spending 15,000 rupees. So, 60,000 rupees gets added up in a month. Take that 60,000 and give it to the give it to the driver in front of this fellow. His heart will his heart will pain. What will happen, sir? Do it for three months. What else? To do? Are you able to follow? Because dhanam can be given only when your indulgences are to curb your indulgence and do your obligation is dhanam. Are you able to follow? This is how it works. Invariably, what the human being does, they will they will they will get highly indulgent and then for indulgences they don't measure for dhanam they measure again i repeat for indulgences they will never measure i have never seen anybody asking how how much should i spend on indulgence sir but universally everybody asks this question how much should i give dhanam sir not a single person had asked it till now. How much should I spend on my indulgences? Everybody asks, how much should I give? I don't know. Because when, when they look in their pocket, nothing is there for dhanam. Why? Because? Why? Nothing is there for dhanam in their pocket. Why? The demands of indulgences always overshoots what they have in their pocket. So they always feel they don't have, they don't have enough. What dhanam can be done? Are you able to follow? Therefore, dhanam is an obligation. Dhanam is an obligation. And because the other is helping you to do your obligation, you prostrate to that person and give dhanam. Because the other person is aiding you. The other person is helping you. Therefore, what do you do? If somebody aids you, if somebody helps you, what you should do? You should prostrate. Therefore, in this culture, we give, before we give dhanam, we, we prostrate to the receiver. Generally speaking, the receiver should prostrate to the giver. No. Here, it is a, here we have a very weird discipline, ulta discipline. What is the ulta discipline? The giver should prostrate to the receiver. Why? The receiver is doing a great favor. I will also like to do this kind of favor, sir. But nobody is. I will also like to do this kind of favor. What? <laughs> but nobody is doing, sir. Don't worry. It will not. Are you able to follow? That is answering the first clarification. Obligate, giving is a giving is obligation full stop. You follow? 
for giving dhanam to some charity, like I see a beggar on the road, you also have to give to him also. Shailesh, was there any was there any murder in the group discussion last evening? Huh? Did any murder, Venkat, Captain? Huh? Was there anything happening there? Something would have, I don't know. Something is happening anyway. But we're good, very good. Should I give it to the beggar and also to a charity? Beggar when you see on the road. Ah, the question is this. Ah, if I give everything to the charity, how can I give it to the beggar? So how much should I give it to the charity and how much should I give it to the beggar? That is the question. In an open classroom like this, we can't proportionate and give an answer. Saying 10 rupee you give, 100 rupee you give, thousand rupee you give to the charity that proportion is not the concern of this classroom at all in this classroom giving is an obligation is what the concern is proportion and all is individual based are you able to follow what i am saying the proportion is individual based it is your choice and it is your freedom and and uh, and uh, and you are responsible for it but all that we talk about in a classroom like this is, do you consider giving as your obligation? Number one. If not, understand giving is your obligation. Number two, giving to whom? From the right pocket, you don't keep it in the left pocket. From the right pocket, I don't shift it to the left pocket. Most of the time, giving happens from the right pocket to the left pocket. That is not giving. Then what it means? Then what is giving? What is the, what is the principle of giving? Cut your indulgences, minimize your indulgences, Eliminate your indulgences and whatsoever you have, you give it as you give it as dhanam or reverse it. You give dhanam and go inside. You should not have anything for indulgence. And then you see how your mind is irritated and agitated. If I see a if I see a beggar on the roadside suffering in front of me. Vis are we giving it to some unknown charity? Whether you are giving to unknown charity or to the beggar doesn't make any, any difference. As long as this, it is not the beggar or the charity that makes a difference. It is, are you curbing your, are you curbing your indulgences? Are you understanding that dhanam is, is done for the purpose of not benefiting the other. Dhanam is done for the purpose of your inner purification. Are you able to follow? These two principles have to be very clear. That's all it is. Whether you give it to the beggar or you give it to the charity is immaterial. And then one more clarification. She has. Questioner. Yes, yes, we. Another, another question she has. Will all positive virtues have a have a negative side to it? Question. Will, will all positive virtues have a negative side to it? For this, she is coming up with an example. To explain to us what she is asking, she came up with an example. What is the example? Ah, if you are intelligent. Will you automatically become arrogant? So the positive intelligence is the positive quality and arrogance follow it up. The answer is if you are not careful, it will develop. 
if you are not careful it will develop it's not an automatic it doesn't happen automatically if you are not careful you will end up developing arrogance are able to follow so the positive quality of intelligent will always that's why it's called vidya garva it it brings a it brings a pride are able to follow to put it very simply anything that you acquire will give you a pride of acquisition if you acquire wealth you have a pride of acquired wealth if you have acquired knowledge you will have the pride of acquiring knowledge so all acquisitions if you are not careful will end up in having will end up in developing a pride a arrogance that is why we say you have to be that's why we say that's why we say you have to be careful to follow you can develop humility and you can have an arrogance about your humility also so you can be a humble person and you can be extremely arrogant about your humility also that's why i keep saying every other class the statement i am the most humblest of everyone the most arrogant statement a human being can make is what i am the i am the most humblest because the ego the arrogance has hidden in what now the ego the arrogance is hidden in that humility now i am number 1 in humility isn't it somewhere it wants to be so even in humility the ego can can enter so it means most of the qualities have this potential have this most of these qualities have this potential that's all whether will it actually happen or not if you are not careful it will happen it's not automatic you follow if you are not careful it will develop are you okay and also like be good at learning that language another clarification if you are good at math does it mean you will be not good at something else yes a human being can only be good at a human being can be relatively good at only one thing it's extremely foolish and arrogant for a person to assume that i can be good at everything i cannot be good at everything a, 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 a human being cannot be good at everything a human being can can know only one or two one or two things jack of all master of none a person can say i know this i know this i know this nothing they know they know only the they know only the very periphery of a few subjects and and they may end up thinking they are wise but the reality is what you can be an expert only in in one relatively even the word expert i am saying in a in a very relative sense so in a, in a very relative sense you can be good only at at one a person good at math may not be good in language a person good at math may not know how to teach it to others somebody can understand but the very fact that you can understand doesn't mean you will know how to because that is a separate skill somebody will know how to understand and they also know how to how to teach you follow what i am saying so like this in everything there are different there are different uh, there are different aspects or different skills skill sets so if you are good at one that's what a human being can possibly do person good at one cannot be good in cannot be good in everything you follow you 
in the previous clarification i said how to be careful how how you will be careful to be careful is to be aware of using the intellect all the time to be careful means using the intellect all the time not being careful means i allow the mind to take over but if i use the intellect all the time i get a headache all the time if i first of all i have to remember and then i should have and then i should use what is being careful means remember to use your intellect can you use it all the time obviously you cannot use it all the time it's very obvious because you don't have that you don't have that kind of a powerful intellect therefore what is it that you have to do as you are using your existing intellect you should do knowledge tapas etc and gain and gather the strength of the intellect more are you able to follow as you are using your existing intellect gain knowledge do reflection do tapas do the spiritual practices and strengthen your and strengthen your intellect more you strengthen it more it becomes available when you feel arrogant then you can use your intellect you never you never wait for feeling you just you you should remember to do your study reflection and sadhana properly every day lifestyle study reflection sadhana study reflection sadhana must be your every day routine this is how you will be safe how to be what is meant to be being safe means every day study every day reflection every day every day sadhana as a lifestyle only when i feel i am arrogant i should remember and be humble you won't even know most of the times you are being arrogant so don't even don't even try that method of whenever i feel whenever i try whenever i feel i am arrogant i remember that i am arrogant i recognize that i am arrogant i will practice this not that practice it's like asking whenever i feel sick i can exercise no what is the answer when you are sick you cannot even get up that is not the time to do an exercise when you should do exercise exercise should be done when you are free or when you are healthy exercise should be done when you are healthy are you able to follow everybody wants to do exercise when they are sick problem of human being is everybody wants to exercise when they are sick and when they are healthy live a lifestyle that is going to make them more sick are you able to follow when a human being is healthy they will live a lifestyle that is going to make them sick and when they are sick they want to they want to exercise and become healthy for what for what the pendulum understand the middle path what is the safe way middle path is the safe way now we are doing the text clarifications are over middle path what is the safe way middle path is the safe way in that middle path life is divided into six stages six phases not stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 it is six aspects is divided into wealth body senses mind intellect spiritual path the life is divided into these six categories and middle path has to be followed in all the six categories this is the safe method what is the safe method middle path what is middle path what is middle path middle path means avoiding the path of extremes mind has a fascination for extremes 
Why mind has a fascination for extremes? Because in extreme, the momentum of the mind will be kept alive in extremes. In the middle path, the momentum of the mind is the, 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 the momentum of the ego, the momentum of the mind is neutralized. It's zero there, which the mind will not like. Are you able to follow the difficulty of middle path? Mind likes to be in that. Mind always be in this momentum. What is the momentum? Constant oscillation. The constant oscillation. When the mind is in one extreme, it makes you to believe. Okay. To understand it, what middle path is, do you recognize that we have never made any decisions in life? We are only moving in opposites. Again, we all think we have made wise decisions in our life till date, no? Do you actually understand that no decisions is being made? It is simply moving from one extreme to the other extreme. Whatsoever extreme you are in, that looks like a decision you have made. And you are going to be in that decision. Actually speaking, the very moment you make that decision, the preparation has started for, the preparation has started to go to the other. Very difficult is to understand this nature of mind. Very, very difficult is to accept this nature of mind. Are you able to follow? How do you know that? You decide one thing on one extreme. Few months later, few years later, you will be moving exactly to the. You will be moving exactly to the, to the opposite. Why? Because in order to decide means to be in the middle, to be in the middle and look at both clearly, and then. Take a decision is to be in the middle, but human mind cannot remain in the middle. It will always go in, will always move in extremes. It is very easy for an indulgent person at one point of time to practice abstinence at another point of time. The person who is practicing abstinence at one point of time will very soon get back to indulgence. Why? Because you always move in extremes. But to eat the right, but to eat the right quantum of food, all three meals a day, day in and day out, assuming you are having a healthy body, yeah? assuming you are having a healthy body, assuming you are having your healthy senses, but to live this kind of a discipline is very is very difficult. Are you able to understand now? But it is easy to move in. But it is easy to move in extremes. And when you are moving in extremes, the person says, today I, today I understood, sir, very clearly what all our decisions are like New Year resolutions. What is a New Year resolution? Same resolution you take same resolution is what is taken year after year after year. Who makes the decision? You. Who violates the decision? You. Are you able to follow? Vijay, Puritha. Who takes the decision? You take the decision. And who is violating it? No, no, sir. I am just improvising it. Uh, you know, new data has come. I have learned. I have understood. I am growing. That is the mind's justification to move in extremes. Because to grow means to be in the... To grow means to be in the, in the middle. To be safe means to be in the, in the middle. Are you able to follow? To be safe means to be in the middle.
a person who is mad after wealth at one point of time chasing it chasing it chasing it at another point of time will say wealth is useless the person who is after indulgences at one point of time at another point of time will practice avoidance of that indulgence what is middle path here you need not indulge you need not abstain you need not indulge you need not abstain because in extremes intellect is not needed naturally you can do. are you able to follow now to be in the extremes no intellect is required no guidance is required no teaching is required you can do it by the mind will do it by itself remember this the mind as a law understand this the mind starts arranging for the opposite remember the law of the mind middle path is to break this pattern of the mind again the mind starts arranging for the opposite what is arranging for the opposite means the mind starts prepare the mind always starts preparing for the opposite you want to know the preparation has start that's why nobody will agree to what i'm can i say what i'm saying means the middle path about the mind nobody will agree nobody if i if i can see one one person accepting this and trying to understand this how the mind functions i will develop an arrogance i will develop an arrogance <laughs> what is that <laughs> the mind starts making preparations for the opposite in the very infatuation the momentum for hatred has started again i repeat in the very infatuation the momentum for hatred has has started that's why the same one who exchange letters of love are the same one who throw who throw mud at each other the same one who exchanged flowers are the same one who exchanges what do they exchange now i don't know what are the opposite of a flowers thorns huh? when you develop friendship in that friendship the potential for hatred has the 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 enmity has already started the moment you get friendly with someone that's why you become friendly at one point of time and you become and you become very enmical towards the same person at another point in time this is the pendulum to be safe means to be in the to be safe means to be in the middle path what is the middle path i will not get excessively close to somebody neither i will develop a hatred and run away from everybody again i repeat i will i will not get obsessively close to somebody neither will i run away from somebody what is middle path what he calls us keep an elbow room he says no keep an elbow room that elbow room is the that elbow room is the is the middle path what is opposite of it have you ever observed you hug so tightly that the other person wants to escape from your clutches in a few seconds hmm you hug so tightly and the other hugs you so tightly that you want to escape from the clutches of the other example i have seen people go and hug the children so tight and the child will scream in and the child will scream in pain saying leave me leave me so affectionate so affectionate the body is bruised no no 
I have seen so many people doing so affectionate, so many. They go, they go near the child and they hold the child and say, oh, they go. Oh, they go. In two minutes after the after they left, you can see the bruise marks in the, the child. Next time you come inside the house, the child starts screaming in pain. Are you follow? Next time you enter, the child starts screaming. Oh, all that I showed is only affection, sir. But what the why are they? Why are they? Why are they running away from me? You didn't show affection. You, you, you only broke their bones. When you break a bone of somebody, next time when you come in, what will they do? They will want to run away from you. Are you able to follow? What is middle path? This is the middle path. The golden means. The golden means is called as the, as the middle path. In this middle path, Padi Murstam Ponavati. We finished something. What are the things that we finished? Body, senses and mind we finished. Correct? Uh -huh. Wealth, body and senses we finished. Wealth we finished. Body we finished. Senses we finished. For wealth, what did we say as a middle path? Practical thing for middle path for wealth. Dhanamla, later on we can worry. Minimum thing that you do is stop. Stop borrowing. Get rid of the idea of borrowing itself is the in the middle path, isn't it? Giving dhanam, charity and all comes much, much later. So at the what is middle path? No. No borrowing. Second, physical body. What is middle path at the level of the physical body? We said. Body means only body means only three things: eating, exercising, sleeping. All of them. Eating means what? A discomfort. A discomfort before eating, and no discomfort after eating. No discomfort before eating. Ah, discomfort before eating. There, there should be a discomfort before eating and no discomfort after eating. Second, exercising. Yeah, right? Right exercise. Opposite of that is what? What is opposite of this? A 70-year-old fellow will want to do exercise like a 20-year-old fellow. How does it work? 70-year-old fellow wants to exercise like a 20-year-old fellow. How does it work like that? Exercise means according to your, according to the body, body condition and age. If people are dying of no exercising, people are dying of exercise. What do you do? Again, there is no middle path. You follow? If people are dying because they are not exercising, there are people dying because of exercising. Yeah. Either no exercise or over exercise. Again, either no exercise or over exercise. And a person who is not exercising at all will do over exercise at some point of time. Other than your resolution. The fellow who is over exercising will stop exercising completely for the next few months after Two weeks, three weeks of exercise because move in oscillations. Then the third thing we said is sensors. What is middle path in relation to the sensors? In relation to the sensors, Urma. Urmongani Vasarvashaka. Like a like a tortoise. Like the tortoise. The sensors contact the world. The sensors move around in the world. The senses will be traveling in the world. The moment there is a sign of danger, it quickly, it quickly withdraws. Like the tortoise withdraws its limbs and safe under the shell. This is how 
in relation to the senses, middle path is practiced. Fourth thing that we mind, intellect, spiritual path is what we are going to study today. What is middle path in relation to the mind? Mind means emotions. Mind means emotions. What are the basic component features of the mind? In the context of middle path that we have to understand, in the context of middle path, the basic component features of the mind that we have to understand is impulses, attachment, likes and dislikes. This is the mind. Again, I repeat. What is the basic component features of the mind? The basic component features of the mind is only three. What are the three impulses, attachment, likes and dislikes? Middle path means being aware and not getting impulsive. Not getting impulsive. Okay, example, when we say you go to when you go for shopping, write a list of what you want and go. We say we simply go shopping and come back. When you simply go shopping and come back, after coming home, you'll realize what? 60-70% of things that you bought is not, is not needed at all. It will be simply, it will be simply lying, it will be simply staying there. Why did you do that? Impulse. Are you able to follow? So, what is, what is the middle path in relation to being impulsive nature of the mind? If there is an urgency, if there is a hurry, say, say, wait, wait. You know, Nobody gets an emergency in life except medical. You know that? Except medical heart attack, nobody will get emergencies in life. Which means there is, there is no need for a person to talk on the mobile phone in two-wheeler. Because nobody is in ICU, isn't it? Nobody is in ICU. But why do, why do they do that? Are you able to follow? Why do they do that? Just, just, an, just an impulse. Second thing in relation to the middle path that you have to be aware of is, first is be aware of impulse, impulsive nature. Second thing that you have to be aware of it is attachment. What is middle path in relation to the attachment? Don't go too close to anybody. Don't stand too far away where you can't see. Hmm? Don't get too close. Too close means this. You can't, I can't even see it. Too far away means take it so far that I can't even see it. So what is middle path? Position yourself where you can see it. Position yourself where you can see it clearly. Attachment. Avoid. Avoid getting attached. Avoid getting obsessed. The third. Three features of the mind. What is the first feature of the mind? Impulses. Second feature of the mind is attachment. The third feature of the mind is Raga and Dvesha. In fact, you should not say Raga and Dvesha. Use the three words. Kama, Raga, Dvesha. In attachment, Kama has already come in. So, impulsive, Kama, Raga, Dvesha. Hmm? Attachment to what you have and craving for what you don't have. 
attachment to what you have and craving for what you don't have. The last one is dvesha, hatred. Of all these, the most dangerous is the hatred. The most dangerous is the hatred. Hmm? What is the middle path then to avoid these three? What is the middle path? Practicing gratitude becomes a middle path to avoid this. Practicing gratitude becomes the middle path to avoid impulsive kama, raga, dvesha. What is the middle path? Practice. Practice gratitude. Hmm? Practice gratitude means keep saying, keep saying, keep saying thank you. Develop this thankfulness and be in that thankfulness. How many, uh, you should be soaked in it 24-7. How many times should I say thank you, sir, in a day? One time? Two times? Five times? Ten times? How many times we should say thank you in a day, Ram Subramaniam? Constantly you should keep repeating it. That is the that is the middle path in relation to the emotions. Fifth one, in relation to the intellect. In relation to the intellect also, you have to follow middle path. Adhike middle path, na, what do we do? So, in relation to the intellect also, he says you have to follow middle path. Now, what is middle path in relation to the intellect? In relation to the intellect, middle path means Okay, what are the extremes of intellect? not making an effort to develop it at all or gathering more and more and more information is understood as having an intellect. Again, what is opposites in relation to the intellect? Simply gathering more and more and more intelligence becomes intellect. One extreme. The other extreme is what? What is the other extreme? No information, no nothing. Straight away I will become wise. You can't do both. Are you able to follow? So, what is the middle path? That's why even in, even in Vedantic knowledge, that 12 books, 13 books becomes a middle path the 12, 13 books becomes the middle path because there are thousands of books. There are thousands of books. Okay. Just the basic 13 books of Vedanta, 10 Upanishads, actually there are 14 Upanishads and the Brahma Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita, if you combine, you know how many verses you will get? All the Upanishads combined will be about 600 mantras. Brahma Sutra is another, roughly again another 600. So 600 plus 600, 1200. Bhagavad Gita is another 700, 1900 verses. Too much to handle that. Too, too much to handle. Therefore, what is the middle path that he prescribes? The middle path that he prescribes is the 13 books as the core syllabus we have. Starting from the book, that's why again and again and again we'll be going through those books only. Again and again and people ask, why not do some other book? Why not do some other book? If we start doing that, then where do we? Where do we end? You follow? Therefore, sticking to a sticking to a syllabus and going deeper in that is the middle path. 
sticking to a fixed set of books and going deeper into that is little path. Sir, this HOA, we are going to conclude. One more topic, one more lesson is there, I think. We'll be concluding. What is the next book we will do? If we say Atma Bodhana, you'll get a heart attack, isn't it? If you say we'll do Atma Bodhana, you'll get a heart attack. If you say Bajagovindam, again you'll get a heart attack. But uh, again, we are going to go back to that only. We are not going to do Oh, sir, but, uh, but, we have, but we have studied this already. We have studied this already. And uh, anyway, recordings of the previous things are there. You know what we will do? This army can both the parts alone, we will delete it. Venkat, <laughs> Yavu Chungo. This army said, delete the, delete the old. All of them keep deleting. I know we will have a lot of things to delete. I the middle path. Hmm? We'll have a lot of things to delete becomes the becomes the are you able to follow? Again and again and again, we keep going through the same thing so that we we keep a we keep a set of books and we use those set of books again and again and again to go deeper into it is a middle path in, in relation to development of the intellect. Are you able to follow? Opposite of that is, no sir, this we have studied. What is the next book? We'll go Ashtavakra Gita. Okay. Oh, so much you are quoting about Katopanishad. Why not do? Why not do Katopanishad once? So much you are talking about Shweta Ketu and his father Uddhalaka Aruni. Oh, beautiful conversation. Why not discuss that? Why not discuss the conversation between Yagya Valkya and, and Maitreji? Where do we stop? Are you able to follow? Where do we end even? This is moving in extremes. This is moving in, in extremes. Are you able to follow? So, for development of intellect, what is the middle path? A minimum prescribed syllabus and, and stick to that and go over it again and again and again. Opposite of that is, I don't need any books and all because books are all words. So it away, I will close my eyes and I will become wise. Yeah. I don't want to I, I, I have never studied scriptures. If I have not studied scriptures, we have read a lot of Times of India, isn't it? So all the knowledge will be Times of India knowledge only. Hmm. You follow? I have never studied scriptures. Sir. All is my original. No, that is one extreme. Another extreme is Book after book after book after book after book. What is middle path in developing the intellect? Stick to, stick to, stick to that, stick to that syllabus. The last one, middle path in relation to the spiritual path. Irrigatively difficult in them. Of all the six things, the most difficult is Sticking to the middle path in the, in the spiritual. What is middle path? What is extremes? One extreme is simply going to the... One extreme is simply following the... Symbolic aspect of religion. Another extreme is all that is wrong superstition. Straight away I will go to philosophy. Two extremes. In this classroom, we can we can fall into the mistake of going to the other extreme. Carefully follow. In this classroom, we can make a mistake of going to that extreme. What is the extreme? All the symbolic aspects of religion can be called as can be called as superstition, blind faith. Mechanical rituals, superstition, all the 99% of the religion can be bracketed into this category and dismissed everything and straight away you can go to the other extreme of saying, I only study, I directly go to the essence. What is not possible? 
what is not possible both the extremes are not both the extremes are not possible it means what there has to be a a judicious a, a judicious careful combination of of both that's a spiritual lifestyle that we live there has to be a judicious combination of whatsoever people call us rituals etc also the study and reflection otherwise what happens one set who gets into the study reflection says oh all these are useless because the study and reflection will make you quote from the scriptures and say long back one of the person said no buddha has uh, the way buddha and other people condemned the vedas sir i said why buddha and why buddha and mahavira if you have studied vedas you will understand vedas themselves condemn themselves why do you need somebody from outside to condemn them because they condemn themselves veda vada rathah he says in chapter in chapter 2 bhagavad gita he says veda vada rathah these people are all they don't know what they are doing he says rabi yagna tapo yagna yoga yagna all this also he also says these people don't know what they are what they are doing and then he says artah artarthi jignasu they also don't know what they are what they are doing in 12th chapter if so it means what either we go to one extreme or we go to the other extreme so in the name of philosophy we ignore the other side in the name of uh, in the name of religion we ignore the philosophy now what is the middle path the middle path is understanding as you are trying to understand the as you are trying to understand the principles you lead a a certain you live a certain lifestyle both combined is what middle path is are you able to follow opposite of that is what i understand philosophy i practice this sir in my in my everyday life i practice therefore a religious lifestyle is not a lifestyle where it is devoid of prayers and other things is not at all necessary sir why because at the end of the day all that matters is i should become unselfish no sir i am becoming unselfish why do i have to waste time doing all these things correct this is moving in extremes in the spiritual path also that's why you always find the so called philosophers the so called uh, religious people themselves are divided into two extreme categories one extreme category they call themselves vedantins another extreme category they say this vedantins ellam pesine irupanga not uh, nothing useful comes out of these people and it is true also uh, they keep talking and talking and talking nothing useful comes out of them also so so you find in spiritual path itself people moving in two extremes what is middle path what is middle path in the spiritual practices middle path in the spiritual practices is whole world you use it at one point of time you have to drop it at another point of time again i repeat what is middle path in the spiritual practices the middle path in the spiritual practices is the middle path in the spiritual practices is use it and let go of it at another point in time it is like moving into a hospital to get out of the hospital one person says i will not get into the hospital at all another person says i will not leave the hospital at all both are extremes are you able to follow you get into it and then you you leave it that is the middle path that vedanta has the 
the middle path prescribed by Vedanta is that. That's why it says at one level do practices of Chitta Shuddhi. At another level it will say what Chitta Shuddhi? Pure you are already. The same knowledge talks about it in two contradictory ways. People are concerned. So, one extreme will take to the thing that I am pure already. All that I have to do is what? Just understand that I am pure. Ah, I have understood that I am pure, sir. What happened? Nothing happens. Isn't it? Other set go into the other extreme. So, what is the middle path in the spiritual practices? A, a judicious, intelligent combination of all these understanding the sequence properly. What is understanding the sequence properly means whole vault. You use it at one point of time and you have to let go of it at another point in time. One set will not use it at all. Another set takes up something and get fanatic about it. Are you able to follow? Again I repeat. One set will not take up anything. Another set will take up something and they will get fanatic about it. We can become fanatic even here in this classroom itself, we can become fanatic. The moment you have become fanatic means you have, the mind has moved to one, one extreme of the pendulum. Very soon, the, the fact that you have become fanatic means the preparation has started. For what? To go to the other extreme of calling it as useless. Are you able to follow? That's why same person at some point of time will come and say, oh, I have never seen anything good like this. Same person after a few years will say, sir, this is not that good, sir, because nothing is, nothing is happening. When you move to one extreme, the preparation has started to go to the other extreme. So in spiritual path also you can do the same thing. Therefore, the advice is stick to advices, stick to middle path at all the six levels. Having said this, we come to the last chapter, chapter 7, the ultimate goal. Next week, not today, next week. With this, we'll be concluding this book. A long topic, a long chapter where the entire part to be a Vedanta treatise is covered. The entire seven, eight books is the entire, the, not the entire, seven, eight books are covered in this last chapter, chapter seven, the ultimate, the ultimate goal. Understanding the ultimate goal, making an effort towards in the direction of the ultimate goal is freedom from the Holocaust of attachment. What is the way to get freedom from the Holocaust of attachment? Understanding the ultimate, understanding the ultimate goal. Understanding what is it that a human being got to do finally. Or all this preparation is for what? So much we spoke about the mind. So much we spoke about, so much we spoke about the mind. So much we spoke about attachments. All this is for what? To move into the ultimate, to move into the ultimate, ultimate goal. Last chapter one, the only the mind goes to the next textbook, isn't it? Having come to the last chapter. And what will, what will, what is the next book? God only knows what is the next book. I don't know what is the next book is. But definitely don't worry. In the moon all book is <laughs> Nothing new will come. The same thing will happen again and again and again. Are you able to follow? Next week, we start with chapter 7, the ultimate goal. 
with this we conclude for today